Welcome. I'd like to walk you through of the new features and enhancements in Excolidra Obsidian 1.6.13. Let me start with the most important new feature, and that is the compressed JSON option. And the reason for doing this is to unclutter the search results in the Obsidian search. So let me just demonstrate to you how this works. For example, on this page, I have this text, more frequent autosave. And in search, when I search for this term, then I get multiple hits on the same document. And that is because when I switch over to Markdown view, you can see that here, the text is repeated within the uh, file format of the Excolidraw uh, file. Now, if I turn on the zipping function, which you can do in Excolidraw settings, and here you just need to turn on compress Excolidraw JSON in Markdown. If I turn this on and I save the document, so this only applies to the documents that you save, so it will not retrospectively compress all of your documents, but you can immediately see that the other search uh, results disappeared, and now I only get a single uh, result which matches my text element uh, on the drawing. Now, what I also did is you can still edit the document in Markdown view. And when I switch over to Markdown view, it will look as if this is not compressed. And that is actually the case because when you choose this option to open a document in Markdown, then for that event, Excolidraw is going to save the document uncompressed and actually you can see that the search results are still here until autosave will save and you saw when autosave did the save then suddenly the search results disappeared. Also you can still edit markdown uh, and the drawing side by side so for example uh, this is my uh, text element and let me just demonstrate to you uh, if I open this up in split view and if I open this uh, version in markdown then I can come here and this is my text element uh, and I can edit this in markdown and you can see that on the left hand side my edits uh, appeared so now if I come back Again, uh, the search results for now are all here because while I was editing this in markdown mode, uh, then these, um, uh, the file was not compressed, but then it will compress again and it, it will disappear. So long story short, uh, I think this is a great feature to unclutter your uh, search results. Then uh, I think the other nice uh, new feature, though it's not very in your face, uh, but I improved a lot on the synchronization support. So for example, this drawing or this mind map I created that I was actually using my desktop to type in the text and I had my iPad open next to my desktop and I was drawing the lines with a pen and with the synchronization support, this actually worked pretty smoothly. Also, if I modify the document, look at that disk icon up there. So for example, I move this, then the disk will turn red until the autosave kicks in. And when autosave kicks in, then the um, disk will turn um, white again. Now you can go to settings and within settings, uh, here you can enable autosave. By default, this should be enabled. And you can set the interval for autosave. I actually set this to 15 seconds. And that is because with that frequency, uh, if I make modifications, those modifications will be synchronized to my uh, desktop uh, or, or to my desktop or to my iPad pretty quickly. I also did a bit of uh, editing on the color palette. So now you can have any size of a color palette. And I actually maybe overdid this for myself a bit. But so for example, here, I added a very long list of colors to my color palette. The way you can do this is here in, I you need to set up a template and I had a video on it. And within the template, you need to set 
your colors like this. So this is my list of colors. On the GitHub page for uh, today's release, I have a link uh, taking you to the location where you can find my color palette if uh, by any chance you would want to use uh, this color palette uh, for yourself. Then you can see that these uh, lines here are sort of organic. I like organic mind maps. And so I created a small script that you can find in the script store called organic lines. And so what this does is if I draw a line like this and let's uh, press this button up here. So this is my script button. Then it turns this line. Maybe this was, of course, so this is nicer when you draw this with a pen, but let me just draw a line like this. And if I uh, press the button, then you can see that this line becomes organic in the sense that it's like a tree. The trunk is uh, wider and the uh, end is much thinner. You can make the line uh, a bit uh, more wide and then you can see the effect. Uh, I like this sort of line in my mind map. If you like this uh, look and feel, then I recommend you go ahead and try the uh, organic line uh, script. There's another cool script uh, that you can find uh, now in the script store, and that's called the repeat elements. And let me just demonstrate to you what the repeat elements is able to do. So you draw two uh, shapes and you position those two shapes the way you want to then repeat them and when you select them and you execute the repeat element scripts let's maybe repeat this five times then you can see that it repeats the transformation uh, that many times and you can create some cool uh, graphics and almost you can call it art uh, using this feature. I th if you like to play with the drawing, then I highly recommend uh, installing the repeat element script. Uh, there's a bit of mobile goodness, which is the link button in the mobile toolbar. So here, if uh, I come here, you can see that there's the create link button. So that's easier to um, create a, a link like that. And then finally, I added some functions to Excolidraw Automate, which are these color uh, manipulation functions. And what I want to show you is this is actually a feature that uh, I created some time back. So here, this is a markdown document. If I open it on the side, you can see that this is actually uh, the code block with the new functions and I can also specify a CSS. In this case, the yellow border around the object is via this CSS. As well, here, if I click uh, this link, then it will take me to the discussion on GitHub, where I have my entire CSS for this markdown, because what you need to do is you need to uh, set up a CSS for how the markdown is formatted when it's uh, dropped into uh, Excolidraw. And then you need to go to Excolidraw settings. And here you need to scroll down uh, quite a bit to, so this is under markdown embed settings, and you need to set up a markdown CSS file. So that's the one that uh, I will link to this video again. And that file is simply a markdown CSS. That uh, markdown CSS is simply a text file uh, that is a style sheet uh, for the markdown document. And that way you can uh, do lots of stuff. So for example, here I can also include a table. Let me just uh, add a quick table here. Hopefully I'm going to be successful. There we go. And that's the, I mean, now this is going to be a very silly table, uh, but I think it will uh, get the message across. So you can see here's my, my table. Of course, these should be header A and B maybe. And then it, the, the table is going to be, going to look uh, slightly uh, more meaningful like that. So, uh, oh, because I messed up my, table. Uh, what the heck did I do? Uh, 
Oh, yes. Because I yeah like this. So now the table is a correct markdown table and it takes a few seconds and then you see, for example, you can bring in a table as well. But uh, frankly, this markdown embed is very powerful. You can do a lot of, uh, lot of stuff with this. So that is the summary of all the features in the new Xcolid Draw release. I hope you will find them helpful, enjoy them, and please raise any suggestions or issues that you come across on GitHub. I try to respond to those uh, pretty quickly. And many of the features I'm showcasing today are in response to these requests that you have raised on GitHub. Thank you.